Welcome back, everybody, to another exciting episode of Blind Man Gaming, uh, Bloodborne. Don't know what I'm calling this series yet, but it's it's Bloodborne. It's actually been less than two minutes uh, since we recorded the Shut last Shut up, it's session. been a week. Whatever. It's been a full week. Okay. Well, anyway, <laughs> so we're here on Central Yarnum. Uh, and Sensual Yarnum. Very sensual. It's sunset uh, on this fine evening. The sky is a very pleasing orange. Uh, it's, it's quite lovely, really. Uh, and... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, we're in the central yard, and the streets are kind of lined with coffins and sandbags and shit. A lot of the coffins are ch have chains on them, strangely enough. Um, there are statues and lanterns and other spooky things. And here we have, right here, a window that is lit up by a lantern, and we can hear coughing from the inside. So we're going to talk to this person that's in there. Oh, you must be a hunter. No, just, just hunter, actually. And just one hunter. not one from around here, either. I'm Gilbert. A fellow outsider. You must have had a fine time of it. Yarnum has a special way of treating guests. Well, I don't think I could stand if I wanted to, but I'm willing to help if there's anything that can be done. <laughs> this town is cursed. Whatever your reasons might be, you should plan a swift exit. Whatever can be gained from this place, it will do more harm than good. Then the protagonist proceeded to ignore that advice. And keep fucking going. That was subtitled, yeah? Yeah. Okay, cool. I have to make sure that's on for everybody. Yeah. So we got, uh, I'm going to talk to him again. Hail, blood, do you say? Hmm. Actually, no, didn't say anything. I've heard of it. But if it's blood you're interested in, you should try the healing church. The church controls all knowledge on blood ministration and all varieties of blood. Across the valley to the east of Yarnum lies the town of the Healing Church, known as the Cathedral Ward. And deep within Cathedral Ward is the old Grand Cathedral, the birthplace of the Healing Church's special blood. Or so they say. <laughs> or so they say. Mm -hmm. Yarnumites don't share much with outsiders. Normally, they wouldn't let you near the place, but the hunt is on tonight. This might be your chance. <laughs> Talk like one more time, just in case it's something else. Across the valley to the east of you, okay, yeah, deep within, I haven't heard of pale blood, blood, but that's your best bet if it's anything to do with unique types of blood. <laughs> Someone got that kind of lozenge. Yeah, for real. Okay, so <laughs> this episode brought to you by Rico. Yeah, we're totally not making money from that. Anyway, we are not. <laughs> so, a couple of things to note here um, is that the, uh, just in front of this guy's window is a lantern that uh, you know it's, it seems to be burning some kind of incense in the smoke room, you know, kind of rising up from it. Also, his window is barred, so those things, you know, just. This, this is a game, I mean, if you've played any of the Souls games, you know, there's a lot of storytelling in the environment, um, and so it's little details like these that really kind of suggest uh, what's going on. You're not going to get, like, you could, if you don't pay attention to the environment, you could get through a lot of this game's story or, or content not knowing what the fuck is happening, just knowing you're fighting horrifying monsters. Exactly. And be pretty vague as to what's happening, but if you really put all the little details together, like, I mean, the guy's... The window's barred, obviously he doesn't want something getting in, you know, the lanterns have got to mean something, and the smoke that they're dispensing is meaningful as well. You know, it's it, it all adds up to an overall ambience that is itself kind of the story, in essence. There you go. And so now we've come across another corpse already here, so we're just going to search that. They got eight pebbles. Sweet, let's throw some rocks. I'll, I like the uh, item description for this, actually, so I'm going to read that. Um, small pebbles found throughout Yarnum can be thrown at foes. Quite thrilling. Also of note is that this pebble looks a lot like an eye. Like it's got kind of like an indentation that looks like an iris. Oh, and weird. then another kind of deeper, you know, smaller indentation that looks like a pupil. Um, so that may or may not be relevant to the story. There are theories about it. I'm not going to say anything. Um, but here we go. We are proceeding across this little bridge. Do those um, pebbles even do damage or are they just for like attracting attention? They, they actually do a tiny little bit of damage. In fact, <laughs> here I can, I can put them and just throw it in. The person that I have no idea is coming up soon. Um, <laughs> oh yeah, so Ooh, ominous bell. Yeah. Oh, motherfucker! Scary. Uh, God damn. 
crates, so I'm gonna throw this pebble out. Uh, and it did three oh, damage. But he is pissed like it did so. I mean, I'd be pissed too. Oh, yeah. fucking rock at me, some like albino ass military veteran out of towner coming in here throwing rocks at me. Yeah, she is an albino. In fact, let me take her foot off so you can see. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. How, yeah. how great this. of a job we did. With the character creation. Yeah, because we were just I, I, we wanted to just max out all of the bars on, and yeah, she's on an albino. And this is what we made. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Pretty proud of this shit. Oh, yes. Put that hood back on. Not that it actually gives too much of a bonus, but still. Hey, in these kind of games, any bonus that you get counts. Uh, I mean, I'm inclined to disagree with that because the margins are so tiny that, I mean, you can pretty much wear whatever you want and you're going to die about the exact amount of time. <laughs> I'll take what I can get. I'm, I <laughs> suck at this, so, like, I would take anything I can get. If it's, like, a 0.05% health regeneration for every three years, I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. All right. So we've got two guys here. Um, one of them's holding a stick with these kind of sitting... Uh, very kind of, he looks fairly either depressed or sleepy um, against the fence here. And there's another guy with what looks to be a wooden plank shield and a torch looking out over this fence here. Do you Molotov um, these guys, or are you just gonna, like, are they close enough together, or do you, you um, have to take them on separately? I'm gonna go ahead and take them on separately just because some of them are not exactly hard guys. Fair enough. Save the Molotov for things that need. Oh, hell yeah, there you go. Oh, there you go. Okay, I do. Oh, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. <laughs> Missed the charge attack. There we go. Oh, there we go. Oh, there we go. Oh. Barely out of range. Okay. And now, let me see. Just looking out over here, there's some stairs leading downwards into the street. And there appears to be quite a large gathering of guys uh, down the street. They're walking away from me right now. Um, and so there's. Again, coffins are very, very prevalent here. There's like a kind of a horse-drawn carriage that appears to have been parked very badly. <laughs> um, and the horse is thoroughly decayed, so this has been here for a while. No one's cleaning this up. Yeah, there's what looks to be kind of like burning crucifixes uh, with these kind of beastly humanoid figures tied to them. Um, and so, yeah, there's kind of just like every now and then. That's actually a detail I didn't get on our last playthrough, like the time that you showed me like my first character. Oh yeah. Yeah, I did not remember that. That's uh, you know, that, that's very telling for what's going down here. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, also, uh, we're, we're very much in what looks to be like a residential area. There's kind of like you know, buildings and apartments and stuff like that. Um, lots of statues and gravestones actually. So like people are being buried just right here in the city. Like right outside their homes or in their general neighborhood or whatever. Mm -hmm. And uh, looks like we have another lantern here next to the door, so we can see, see what we can get out of that. Yeah, and again, it's burning that same, just smoke rising from it. It's, I mean, you, you do kind of learn that later in the story, it's explicitly said, but, you know, I just kind of wanted to mention it. But anyway, we're going to knock. Lads, you ought to come on. You'd open that door and not hunt. I mean, that's a good point. Oh, still. Are you <laughs> now. Let's see if we'll anything else. Nope, fuck off. Okay. Yeah. All right. Oh, hey, oh my god. Okay, it's the guys. Hi there. Oh shit, they came back. Yeah, I'm gonna run the fuck away. Oh shit. Man, they, I didn't position. even, I did not even hear them coming. Oh yeah, they can be pretty fast. Yeah. Got one guy's right. Wow. Oh, oh, yeah. oh. Oh, and of course, my. Oh. I've seen the reason why I'm thinking about it is it's absolutely frightening when it goes sometimes. Playstyle versus like the Souls games, more like parrying, defensive, blocking, uh, backstepping kind of gameplay. Whereas here you've got, you know, you're gonna take a hit, and if you can respond to that with aggression in a timely manner, you're gonna get some of that health back. Exactly. Very different from the defensive style. Oh, very much. So. And you're not even really, I don't even think you have a, do you really even have a block button for this? Um, you don't. I mean, you can get, like, uh, there's a place where you can pick up, like, a fight shield, like those guys with the torches or Right, right. Um, but... But, I mean, it's not really, the game mechanic does not reward blocking the same way it reward, rewards aggression. Exactly. So, one of these guys seems to drop something, we got another blood vial. Alright. Um, we got 13 blood vials right now. Damn, we're loaded. Oh, yeah, we're doing pretty well so far. I'm going to drop this little staircase up to the right here. 
See, in a video game, you collect this much of other people's blood, and it's cool. In reality, I do it, and I get kicked out of the PTA. Yeah, I mean, that was... <laughs> I mean, it was kind of a gamble to begin with. I wasn't really 100% sure if they were going to be okay with it. Yeah, but, but I mean, I should have asked. I always thought the whole ask better to ask forgiveness than permission, but it turns out when illegally, you know, harvesting children's blood during, uh, you know, important school functions. Yeah, it turns out it, that's not one of those permission forgiveness things. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So let's see, we've got a body, we've got some more Molotov cocktails, so that's going to help us. Oh, well, here's another, uh, we can talk to this person inside this door again, the lantern. Are you that outsider? Well, sorry, but I don't want anything to do with you. Trot along, will ya? I like that totally non-insular mindset. you that outsider? Yeah. And of course, like, what, 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 and I guess, I don't know how relevant this is or not, but it seems like people already know about you here. Yeah, it's really interesting that you're walking through this and they're, like, already saying, you know, are you the outsider or, yeah. you know, stuff like that. It's like, you, you weren't making your presence known coming into the clinic or, like, getting up. It's not like you came in and, like, you know, with a big fanfare. Yeah. And yet somehow it seems you're already known about as if either they heard word of you or as if you've already been here before somehow. Mm -hmm. So there, there's some mystery in that. I'm thinking it's they've, they've just kind of got word yeah. or something. Uh, let's see, we've got a sleeping guy here with a rifle. Uh, so I'm just going to take him out. Nice and oh my god, seriously. Oh, dude. You want to ride over his head. Completely wished. Oh! There we go. Okay, and he's probably going to give us some quick silver bullets. All right. Which are always nice to have. That's pretty much, that's your only style of bullet, isn't it? Or, I mean, do you get more bullets? Oh, uh, no, that's the only style of bullets. Gotcha. Uh, and in fact, uh, after we go up here, uh, I'll kind of read you that description. Okay, there's a guy sitting there. Oh, oh, shit. He would be very scary. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay, now we find a bloodstone shard on this corpse. Um, and I'm going to real quick just go into the inventory. We're going to talk about that. So, bloodstone shard. A solid shard that forms in cold blood. After death, a substance in the blood hardens, and that which does not crystallize is called a bloodstone. At the workshop, these bloodstones are embedded in weapons to fortify them. So basically, they make your shit stop. It's um, like socketing gems in Diablo or something. Yeah. And so, also, let me, uh, I can read about the Quicksilver bullets here. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, actually, wait. Uh, yeah, that's actually going to be only in the shop where we can buy them. Oh, okay. But that's, that's cool. Right. That's cool. So, let's keep on going here. Um, and so, we continue onwards. And we got this Oh, shit. And we're kind of on a raised walkway bordering a kind of like almost like a town square type area. And there's a lot of guys in the center. Now before here. we get into this fight, I think this is a good place to wrap it up for this episode. Good and idea. we'll get you guys in the next fight. We'll see y'all shortly. Cool. So have a good one. Yeah.